हजर सब जाना नमस्कार मेरे नाम तारा सिक्देल हो मैं सैन फ्रांसिस्को अमेरिका बा हजरस बोलि रखे जो जो जूम मिटिंग में आज जोड़ू र जसले हमीर फेसबुक लाइव बा हेदे हजर सब निरी को वेबिनार सीरीज पेलो में स्वागत आज हमी यो वेबिनार को लंच नहीं भू म लंच करते इस हमी तीनवटा कुछ अचिव कर खोजी रखे मैं एक दुई तीन बने भू कार कर खोजी भाई कुरा में यो तो कि काम आज भाग पचास साठी सत्तरी वर्ष अगि हो जो लो रिसर्च को बारे में विज्ञान को बारे में हमारा कुरा अल गहन रूप में पैला नहीं हो तो अब हम सुरू कर इसलिए के हमी रिसर्च करने ये वैज्ञानिक भिसर्चर भिन्नी के लैब में गए भाई कुछ हमी हम परिवार मत हो परिवार भाग बाहर भी हम कम्युनिकेट कर हमारा बा आमा को जेनरेसनसंग कम्युनिकेट कर हम साथी को जेनरेसनसंग कम्युनिकेट कर हमी भाई यंग जेनरेसन जो तिनी वहाँसंग कम्युनिकेट कर प्रयोजन ये वेबिनार को प्रयोजन एटा थे अर्क हु इज हु हमी नेपाली वैज्ञानिक नेपाली रिसर्चर अकाडेम अकाडेमी में को छो के बारे में इसलिए जानकारी कराँच हमी इस जुट्स एवटे कोठा में जुट्स पैले भेट नाथी भेट रहा काम को बारे में बुझ् इसलिए फेसिलिटेट कर सहज बना दोसों अप्सन दोसों पर्पस हो रेसों पर्पस को हम यंगर जेनरेसन हम विद्यार्थी जो वर्ग हो वहाँ हम दाई को हम काका को हम अलग अगाड़ी को जेनरेसन में रिसर्चर करने प्रोफेसर अथवा साइंटिस्टर को होक बाटो में मग्न सकु कि वहाँ के काम करूँ अलग रोल मोडल को काम भी हो रहा अलग बाहर आउटरिच भी हो भाई ये वेबिनार हमी आयोजना करी असाध एटा यंग ऑर्गनाइजेशन भर्खर हमें लंच गये जनवरी फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन में हमी असाध सान उमेर को संस्था हूं इसको बारे में अलग कई प्रकाश पाइदि मो संस्था को चेयरमेन डॉक्टर राजेन्द्र पंगेनीजी अनुरोध करदु राजी थैंक यू सर थैंक यू एवरी वन यहाँ सब जाना निरी को पेलो ओबिनार सीरीज को आज पेल दिन हो यहाँ कोई हार्दिक धन्यवाद व्यक्त करना चाहूँ ऑन बिहाफ अफ निरी फैमिली निरी हमी सत्ताईस जान मिले सुरुआत कर सत्ताईस जना को संस्था हो सब जाना को संस्था हो हमी भो सब नेपाली को साझा संस्था बनोस् भाँचों अमी एक वर्ष लगभग एक वर्ष जी छलफल गये निरी कस्त मोडल में अगड़ी लैजान पर्ला हमी विश्वभरी का साथी कहल नभेटे कहल नचिने का एक अर्ला तीपनी हमी कमन एवटे उद्देश्य साझा उद्देश्य साझा सपना लीरी में जमा भैया छो मैं लगे आप में एकदम सुंदर हो नेपाल सब प्रदेश का साथी यहाँ पर सब महादेश का साथी जमा पा छो मैं कुरा कर छोटो में के भन चाहूँ हमी यहाँ सबजनास सहकार कोलाबरेट कर जहाँ संभव होग काम करना एकदम तैयार छतुर छो यो निरी हमी सब को साझा संस्था बना सक यहाँ को सहभागिता यहाँ को सहकार हम एकदम महत्वपूर्ण छी नया जेनरेसन कई समय पीछे वर्षोंसम पच्चीस हम हम लाइफ में फर्क हे हमें निरी बनाये एट संस्था बनाये जो नेपाली को सा संस्था बनो भन्न सकूं रो ग्रोथ चाहे लिमिटलेस हो जो पी म काम कर रिसर्च कर कोईपनी साथी कोईपनी यंगस्टर्स यहाँ आर जोड़िए के काम करने वातावरण बना सकूँ भाई हम प्रयास जारी रहने यहाँ सबजना फिर हार्दिक स्वागत आभार कृतज्ञता व्यक्त करना चाहिए मेरे तरफ बा फेरी हजर थैंक यू सो मच राजी हजर ने निरी को छोटो परिचय दूंभ अब मिलो नगरिकन वेबिनार को तीर लगे रो वेबिनार को सुरू कर 
आज को हम स्पीकर हो डर बिलोन खम्बू वहाँ लगत करना चाहूँ आज हमी एटा टपिक जो अलग हम अल नौलो अल एक्जोटिक नहीं नया नया टपिक हो टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन में यह अटोफेजी भाई जो शब्द यो शब्द बायोलॉजिकल साइंसेस में नौलो तो होना तर जनमानस में अल नौलो नहीं मैं हिजो फेसबुक पोस्ट में लिखा खेल अटोफेजी को के होने भादा खेल ये हम घर को भैक्यूम क्लिनर जस्तों हो घर बेला बेला में सफा कर पर्ने हु यदि हमी बेला बेला में सफा करेन उसको थो फोहर को थुप्रो बढ़ते गए घर नहीं दूषित बनाने रनाने रस्ना अनुपयुक्त होने संभावना होते काम हम शरीर को सेल्स में भैरा होर्गन में भैरा हो बारे में अगले गहन अध्ययन अनुसंधान जारी रही अध्ययन अनुसंधान करने एटा व्यक्तित्व हम्रे समुदाय को हम्रे बिलोन डॉक्टर बिलोन खम्बू आज हमीर के बीच में हो रोल अफ अटोफेजी इन लिवर डिजिजेस को बारे में कुछ बिलोनजी काठमंडू बा भक्तपुर वहाँ चाह भक्तपुर को मध्यपुर अलग मध्यपुर नगरपालिका कहे मध्यपुर में जन्मन भो ती हुन भो ती स्कूलिंग अल्ले अमेरिका को न्यू ओर्लिन्स में यूनिवर्स ठूलेन यूनिवर्सिटी में एसिस्टेन्ट प्रोफेसर को रूप में काम करते हुआ वहाँ वहाँ चाहे आपको परिवारसंग श्रीमती आठ वर्ष को बाबू आठ महीना को छोरीसंग न्यू ओर्लिन्स में बस्तर यो लुइजिना राज्य में पर्च न्यू ओर्लिन्स में मूव करूंदा पैला बिलोनजी इंडियाना यूनिवर्सिटी स्कूल अफ मेडिशिन जो इंडियाना में पर्च तैं पोस्टक हो पोस्ट को पोस्ट डॉक्टरल ट्रेनिंग तैंभंद अगि पीएचडी को डिग्री बिलोनजी ने क्योटो यूनिवर्सिटी स्कूल अफ मेडिशिन लिखा जापान जानूंदा पैला बीपी कोयरला इंस्टिट्यूट अफ हेल्थ साइंसेस स्कूल अफ मेडिशिन मस्टर्स करोभंदा पैला माइक्रोबायोलॉजी में बीएससी त्रिभुवन यूनिवर्सिटी रो यात्रा भक्तपुर मध्यपुर जापान ते पच्छी इंडियाना ते पच्छी न्यू ओर्लिन्स वहाँ अटोफेजी में रिसर्च करने एटा इंडिपेन्डेन्ट रिसर्चर टेन्यूर ट्रैक फैकल्टी के रूप में काम करते हुए वहाँ ली आज पाँगा खेल हम एकदम गौरवान्वित छोड़ रो अनुरोध जो स्वीकार कर दून भाई हजूले तेस को लगी हम धर ग्रेटफुल छतज्ञ छ बिलोनजी को रिसर्च तीनवटा मेजर टपिक में फोकस इसमें वहाँ के ऑटोफेजी एंड लिवर मेटाबोलिज्म तो टपिक में काम करना एटा सब टपिक इसलिए कसरी लिवर मेटाबोलिज्म में इंपैक्ट कर सेकेंड टपिक रोल अफ ऑटोफेजी इन डिजिज डिजेनरेशन एंड रिजेनरेशन यो विशेष कर लिवर में बड़ी एप्लाई करो बड़ी रेलिवेन्ट लिवर चाहे एकदम हाईली रिजेनरेटिव ऑर्गन हो तो हम अलग सुनने मलिकुलर मेकानिजम्स अफ ऑटोफेजी ड्यूरिंग सेलर स्ट्रेस ये होना तो वहाँ को कंटेक्स लिवर छर यह अलग ब्रड हो इसलिए कसरी इसका मलिकुलर प्रोसेस के इसमें कुछ जीन इन्वल्व हो प्रोटीन इन्वल्व हो इसको भि इंजिन भि भन अब इंजिन मैं एट एनालॉजी दिन खोजे तर इसको डिटेल प्रोसेस के होको बारे में हमी आज सुनने अब मैं ये बिलोन डॉक्टर बिलोन खम्बू को ये इंट्रोडक्शन करें अब विथआउट एनी फर्दर ड्यू म डॉक्टर बिलोन खम्बूला स्वागत करना चाहूँ बिलोनजी माइक इज विथ यू वेलकम Ajay, you 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 are allowed to share your screen. Please go ahead.
Hello and namaste everyone. Sathya, I'm going to research ko bise baar kile. I'm after some of the research slide ro English mani prastut garsa. Maile tarada isan pura garis a kichu. Tamayar ko ki question aur ichan atwa ki maile Nepali ma clarify garnu par ichha maile. Azur maile noise kisa ekana malai bichama ro ke re question swad swad daunsa. Pati kura abo yeh research ko scientific term aur Nepali ko thakai. Rupantar and Novae Gulim was generally your slider saying Ongreji Mani present girls with a question and answer say Ongreji Atha Nepalibara, uh, me, uh, Gorda Unsa, but it's a so this you, uh, as a Gumero, basically, uh, friends, uh, welcome to this, uh, seminar. The title of my today's talk is Role of Autophagy in Liver Diseases. So, uh, before I really start my talk, I would like to thank Niri for giving me this wonderful opportunity to showcase my lab's research work. Uh, in today's talk, basically, I'm going to tell a short story about three different things. One is about how liver disease develop in a pathological perspective. And the second is how we study the liver disease in a preclinical model in a basic research lab. And the third thing also, how the autophagy deficiency plays role in the development of liver diseases. So, uh, those are the three things I'll try to cover under today's talk. So these are my disclaimers. I have no conflict of interest nor commercial interest to disclose. And I'm not a clinical doctor. So any questions related to liver disease need to be consulted to the physicians. And these are the outline of my today's talk. So basically I'm gonna start with uh, the basics about the liver structure and the functions. Then I will, so what are the pathological changes that happens in the liver diseases? Uh, and with that, I will show the scientific premise on which we base our ongoing research work. And with that, I'll show the different kind of preclinical models that are used to study the liver diseases. And under that preclinical model, I'll show a genetic model that we frequently use in our lab to study that's called the autophagy deficient liver. So under that model, I'll, I'll give a brief background about the autophagy process. And basically what I'll try to tell you under this like uh, section is what happens when autophagy is defective in the liver. So many things happens in the liver when autophagy is defective. But today I'm gonna specifically focus on injury associated regeneration that happens in the context of autophagy deficits. So let's get started with the basics about the liver structure and the function. So as we all know, liver is one of the largest and the biggest organ of human body that's located in the upper right side of the abdomen below the diaphragm. So it has different functions ranging from carbohydrate, lipid, or protein metabolism. The liver also detoxifies the drugs or the genobiotics. Liver can synthesize different plasma proteins and secrete it into the general circulation. And one of the very popular function of liver is to synthesize the bile acid. As we all know, bile is synthesized by the liver then it's secreted out from the liver and temporarily stored into the gallbladder. And with the intake of food, then the, the bile acids are squeezed and secreted from the gallbladder out into the intestine. And it, in the intestine, this bile acid is necessary for the absorption and the digestion of the lipids. So at a very cellular level, the liver consists of different types of cells. However, one of the very important cells in the liver is the hepatocytes that makes up the 80% of the total liver volume and other cells that are present in the liver are endothelial cells, stellate cells, or the immune cells, such as the Kupfer cells. So when we see a histologically, one of the interesting thing about the liver is that liver receives a dual circulation. That means liver receives oxygenated blood from the hepatic artery and liver also receives a low oxygenated but a nutrient rich blood from the intestine through this portal vein. So here, I generally try to show you the uh, histological section of the portal triad. What does that portal triad means is that there are three different like vessels. One is for the portal vein, through which the liver receives the nutrient reads like blood from the intestine. Another is the branch of the hepatic artery through which the liver receives the oxygenated blood. And another one is the bile duct. So through this bile duct, actually the liver release secretes this bile acid into the gallbladder. So, we can, you can clearly appreciate that this region is called like portal triad. And from the portal triad, there is a lining of the sinusoids along which there lies the like 
many hepatocytes in a very linear fashion, which we can see here as a form of a seat of hepatocytes running from the portal triad up to the central base. So in this general like uh, liver section, you can clearly appreciate that most of the cells are the hepatocytes and there are very few of the non-hepatocytes like the endothelial or endothelial cells, stellate cells or the Kruffer cells. So this is the general histology of a normal liver. Now, let's see what are the pathological changes that happens in the liver during the course of liver, de uh, during the course of liver disease development. So the fundamental idea is very simple in the liver. What happens is a normal liver, when exposed to different hepatic stressors, the hepatic stressors could be high fat diet, alcohol, or the genobiotics. So the first thing that happens in the liver is because of this stressor, there is a development of statosis. What those statosis means is actually accumulation of fat in the hepatocytes. Here we can see there are a lot of like white bubble kind of structures. Those are the fats that are being deposited within the hepatocytes. So with the development of statosis, then the next thing that happens in the liver is called a like statohepatitis. That means there is not only accumulation of the fats, but there is now infiltration of different immune cells. That we call it as an inflammation. So that's why the combination of statosis and the inflammation, it's called a statohepatitis. So after this development of statohepatitis, then there is a next phase of like pathological change, which is called a cirrhosis or called a fibrosis. So basically the fibrosis and cirrhosis means the liver stiffness increases because of accumulation of extracellular collagen fiber between the hepatocytes. So, so one of the very interesting thing about these pathological changes, which I would like to uh, take your attention is that no matter what kind of hepatic stressors are there, like maybe it could be fat, could be alcohol or a genobiotic, they all like kind of, they all cause the same kind of pathological changes. Always start with the stethosis, then state of hepatitis and the cirrhosis. So that's why our research interest in my lab is actually to understand the molecular drivers of this liver pathologies. And well, we wanted to see whether they could be therapeutically targeted or not. Now, uh, based on that, our scientific premise about ongoing work is that there is a normal hepatocyte in the liver. When it's exposed to this different stressors like high fat diet or alcohol or body, what happens is the hepatocytes are stressed basically and they release different hepatic factors. We call it hepatic factors uh, because these are the factors specifically released from the hepatocytes. So, and the factor could be either X or Y. That means it could be nuclear or it could be a cytosol. Sometimes the hepatokine ward is also coined. So idea is a stressed hepatocytes release these factors outside the hepatocytes extracellular. So when the stressor liver is like crossing the threshold limit then, in that context, the hepatocytes can also undergo cell death process, or we call it as a cell injury. And in that case as well, the hepatocytes release different like intracellular components that we call it as a damage associated molecular pattern. It's called a DAM. So no matter whether the hepatocytes is stressed or the hepatocytes are dying, they release a hepatic factors. And these hepatic factors are actually responsible for activating the immune cells such as macrophages to cause the inflammation these hepatic factors can activate the progenitor cells to stimulate the liver regeneration, or these factors can activate the stellate cells, which are a particular type of cell in the liver that are responsible for the deposition of collagen fiber for the formation of fibrosis or the cirrhosis. And we believe that the repeated uh, kind of, this kind of insult results in the development of the tumor. And that's why our long-term goal in, in the lab is to understand uh, these hepatic factors. Basically, we want to identify and therapeutically target these hepatic factors because we believe that these are the hepatic factors that are responsible for the development of all of these liver pathologies. So now let's see how we study how we study the liver pathogenesis in a preclinical model. So when I say it's a preclinical model, that means it's before the clinic. It's in a basic research lab. So, so we always start with the uh, in vivo mice model. So we have a C57 black mice. So we give, we give them different types of diet. We give them hepatotoxins or we genetically knock out uh, 
uh, specific genes that are important for the normal function of the cells. So in a dietary model, we give them different high fat diets. We, we could give them alcohol or we could give them special diets such as choline deficient ethionine supplemented diet. We also give them special diet that contains the DDC toxin or we inject the mice with the CCL4 or CCL4 in combination with the DIN, these are basically uh, genotoxins. Or in the third category, we uh, specifically knock out a gene such as ATG7 or ATG5, which I'm going to discuss in more detail today. Uh, and in all of these cases, what we do is we basically harvest the liver tissue, we harvest the blood sample, and we harvest the non-liver non tissues, tissues other than the liver. So then what we do is basically with the liver tissue, we make a tissue block. Then from the tissue blocks, we use it for a general histology. And uh, we also store some of the tissues at minus 80. And from this tissue sample, we do different like mRNA or protein expression analysis by standard like cell and molecular biology experiment. Now from the blood sample, we do a serum analysis such as uh, ALT or ASD or analyze specific metabolites that are of interest uh, to our group. And we also, isolate these other tissues for inter-organ comparative analysis. So not only this, we do take approach of in vitro as well, where we isolate the primary liver cells uh, by simply perfusing the liver. Here I saw the image of the primary hepatocytes that we can easily isolate by perfusing the mouse liver. And we do, a, after the culturing this primary hepatocytes, we basically do a standard experiment like the one I pointed out here. However, one of the problem with the primary hepatocytes is that after four to five days of culture, they lose the hepatocytes function and they start to differentiate in a, into a like fibrotic type of cells. So that's why, uh, you know, whatever experiment that we have to do, we have to do it within that four days of time period. And that's why we generally switch on to like uh, another hepatic cell line model that can be continuously grown and that, uh, that they can like, uh, uh, that have the future of the hepatocytes. So basically, uh, in today's talk, I'm going to talk about this genetic knockout model where a particular gene such as ATG7 or ATG5s are knockout in the hepatocytes and we give a term like autophagy deficient mice. So before I saw uh, most of our data about the autophagy deficient mice, let me give you a brief background about the autophagy process. So autophagy process, as Daradai just like uh, give a brief background in a very layman aspect, to me, I envision autophagy process as a dumpster truck that collects all the cellular garbages and make us make our household stay clean. So, but as a cellular label, what happens is in autophagy, basically it always starts in the cytoplasm by formation of this expanding membrane called phagophore. So this phagophore basically then expands and like forms a double membrane is basically called of autophagosomes and this autophagosome formation is actually the hallmark for the induction of autophagy and these autophagosomes can be clearly visualized uh, in the electron microscope as a double membranous vesicle where we can see the different cytosolic components such as mitochondria or ER or the protein aggregates being enwrapped and these autophagosome can also be visualized as a punta like structure in the cytosol of the cell by doing immunofluorescence staining for the LC3. So after the formation of autophagosome, then it fuses with the lysosome to make autolysosomes. And it is actually inside these autolysosomes where different cytosolic components are broken down into a simpler unit for the recycling purpose. So, so basically in the field of autophagy, there, uh, there are two scientists that has been awarded Nobel Prize. One was to Christian Dubé from Rockefeller University in 1974. He was also the one to discover the lysosome and the term, the word autophagy. And the second one was uh, to the professor Yoshinori Osumi in 2016 for the discovery of different autophagy related genes. However, since 1960 to the 1990s, the, most of the autophagy related studies were done at a structure and morphological level. However, with the discovery of different autophagy related genes by professor Yoshinori, then there was a rapid surge in understanding the basic molecular mechanism of autophagy. That means basically people try to like understand different signaling pathways and about the origin of the membrane for the phagophore. So now we basically know pretty much about the uh, different mechanisms that are involved in the induction of autophagy. However, in the field now, uh, people are now uh, 
trying to understand the pathophysiological role of autophagy in a different tissues and uh, also trying to therapeutically target this autophagy process either by inhibiting or by activating in a disease conditions. So my lab is actually interested to understand the role of autophagy in the liver tissue. And in my lab right now, we have a three different project team. One is about autophagy in disease, degeneration and regeneration. I'm gonna, going to talk in more detail about this project team today. We also have a resource team about role of autophagy in metabolism. And we're hoping to expand our project team on autophagy and liver development after we get our first independent R1 grant. Under the project team B, what we basically try to show is, I mean, in the field, we're trying to push a novel concept about the autophagy uh, and how it contributes to the metabolism. So in the field, what is known is autophagy basically degrades the different nutrients and recycle it. And by that way, it contributes to the metabolism. But what we are trying to push a novel concept is that Autophagy not only do like that. Autophagy can regulate the transcriptionally regulate the different signaling molecules such as FXR or nuclear receptors and directly contribute to regulate the different metabolic enzymes. So uh, that's a kind of we think it's a novel concept uh, which I think uh, people may like it and that's why we are pursuing the autophagy in that uh, autophagy role in metabolism in that direction. So, but I'm not going to talk about this uh, project team yet, but I'll focus on project team uh, yet today where uh, I try to show what are the pathological consequences that happens in the liver deficient with the autophagy. So that's why we, uh, the first question that we wanted to know is what happens when autophagy is defective in the liver? So to answer that question, we first uh, generated this hepatocyte specific ATG7 knockout. So ATG7 is one of the important gene that is necessary for the autophagy formation. So if there is no ATG7, there is no autophagy process. And I'd like to remind you here that this ATG7 knockout is specific in the hepatocytes and there are other cells uh, in the liver other than the hepatocytes. So, the way we generate this hepatocyte specific AT7 knockout is we have a ATC7 flux mice. We basically cross these mice with the albumin cre mice. This albumin cre mice is actually expressed the cre recombinase, uh, and the cre recombinase expression is regulated by the albumin promoter. So we get this hepatocyte specific AT7 knockout. Uh, and one of the important things what I'd like to pinpoint here is that these hepatocyte specific knockout mice has intact autophagy in non hepatocytes or the tissue other than the liver. So the autophagy is defective only in the hepatocytes, which we can see here by Western blood of the liver lysate where we don't see the expression of ATG7 and we see the accumulation of a P62 protein, which is actually a autophagy substrate that is accumulated when autophagy is defective. Actually, this P62 is an adapter protein that is utilized by autophagosome to like phagocytose these different like cytosolic components. So we can see the accumulation of this P62 protein uh, in a just histological analysis here. We saw that there's a good amount of P62 uh, brown staining uh, and the P62 green staining in a immunofluorescent staining of this liver section of autophagy defective liver. So, what happens when autophagy is defective is actually many things happen when autophagy is defective. The very first remarkable thing is there is a severe hepatomegaly as shown here by a bigger liver size as compared to the normal one. And the hepatomegaly is because of hypertrophic hepatocytes. The size of hepatocytes are pretty much bigger compared to the normal hepatocytes. Another remarkable like feature of uh, the liver is that there is a severe liver injury. What does that mean is that there is increase in the release of these hepatic enzymes such as transaminases, ELT transaminases in the general circulation. And in this model, the liver injury starts from the six week of age. And because of this liver injury, there is severe infiltration of FO80 positive like inflammatory cells. We see here more of the brown staining in the liver section of this hepatocyte specific 87 knockout. There is increased ac accumulation of the extracellular collagen fiber. Also increasing expression of the different fibrotic genes such as collagen and T1. And this might spontaneously develop a tumor by the age of nine months where we see a lot of tumors being popping out uh, and the number and size of this tumor gradually increase as the mice gets older. And 
because of all of this phenotype, the mice actually has a higher mortality rate. So we have verified this phenotype in uh, ATG5 knockout model, which is another important autophagy related genes. We have verified this phenotype in an indicable model of uh, autophagy knockout. However, one of the important thing, what, what we have noticed during the development of this liver phenotype is that this model reflects the, all the stages of liver disease, beginning from liver injury to inflammation to fibrosis to the tumor development. So that's why we believe that studying this model will help us or at least give us a mechanistic clue about how these different uh, pathological changes develop in the context of liver diseases. So that's why this central question for us is actually why liver develop these pathologies in absence of autophages? We believe that it's not because of cells autonomous failure uh, because the cells are getting bigger in size, but what we believe is that these are all related to a specific signaling factors that are being released by the hepatocytes. And we, uh, that's our interest. I mean, uh, we, we, we really want to identify the factors which is responsible for creating this so many time of uh, so many types of liver pathologies. So that's why in relation to that, we have already reported on one of the protein called HMGB1, which is actually a nuclear protein. And we have shown that in autophagy deficient liver, the HMGB1 is actually released extracellularly and they're responsible for the expansion of the progenitor cells, and they're also responsible for the tumorigenesis process. So we have reported that study earlier in 2018. And what we can see here is that in a, uh, autophagy deficient liver, there is a massive expansion of different hepatic progenitor cells as shown here by the staining of CK19, A6, or the EPKM, which are the specific marker for the progenitor cells. When we genetically co-delete that HMGB1 protein, actually, we don't see the expansion of these hepatic progenitor cells. So that clearly suggests that the HMGB1 is actually playing an important role in the expansion of these hepatic progenitor cells. So it's not only in this autophagy deficient model. Our collaborator in the Columbia University have already shown that uh, the HMGB1 does play a role in other model of the liver injury as well. So in the same study, we saw that this HMGB1 also play a role in the hepatic tumorigenesis. We can see here in autophagy deficient model, many of the tumor pop out begin from the nine weeks, but we don't see the tumor being popping out at the nine months in an ATZ7 HMGB1 double knockout, suggesting that it slows down the progression of the liver development when we delete the HMGB1. So we have extended this finding in, a, uh, uh, in a, another study where we saw that this extracellular release HMGB1 actually binds to the RAISE receptor uh, that's expressed on the ductular cell, which is also called a progenitor cells. The ray is also expressed on the macrophages and modulating the tumor microenvironment for the development of the tumor. So uh, we have already reported this study. So that's why we are further extending this study uh, on how we can target this HMGB on protein to prevent this expansion of progenitor cells and the hepatic uh, tumorigenesis process. But so, uh, so, so in this model so far, what we know is actually, we know how this uh, ductular reaction or the progenitor cell expansion happen and how the tumor genesis happen. We know that these are mediated by the HMGB1 protein. We also know that the liver injury that is happening in this model is because of suppression of FXR and because of accumulation of cholestasis. I didn't show the data about this study today, but what we don't know right now is how this inflammation and how these fibrosis happen in this model. But however, one of the wondering thing that in, in this model for us is that despite of like severe liver injury that is happening in this model, which we can see here by increasing the transaminases in them, which are specifically expressed in the hepatocytes. That means a lot of hepatocytes are dying, but in spite of so many hepatocytes dying, what we see is that still the hepatic functional parameters such as the serum albumin or the blood urea level is pretty much normal in these mice. So uh, as we all know that hepatocytes are the one that are responsible for the synthesis and secretion of the albumin. So that makes us wonder if so many hepatocytes are dying, how, how come that the serum level of this albumin is still normal in these mice? So that makes us wonder that something is going on which we don't know. So, so that's why we, we ask this, uh, like one of the important question, like 
how could such severely injured liver continue the normal hepatic function? So that, uh, that's a question that hammer our hammer us for a couple of months at the very beginning. And the only thing that pop out in our head is probably it, in the injured autophagy deficient uh, liver, there might be a new wave of hepatocytes that are coming in, and those new hepatocytes is taking on the function of lost hepatocytes. So that's the only possibility that we have it in our mind, and uh, that's why we ask: Are there any regenerating new hepatocytes in the injured autophagy deficient hepatocytes? And uh, we took a very general approach. We did a general histological analysis in the older mice of four to nine months old, since. My lab is in a pathology lab, so we, we, we have like good infrastructure to do uh, the staining and uh, take a good like uh, imaging of those general histological uh, slides. So, so we took this approach and one of the surprising things that we noted in, in this general histological analysis is that we see uh, like patches of normal looking hepatocytes that are nicely like coexisting together with the hypertrophied and inflamed hepatocytes. I'd like to remind you that Autophagy deficient hepatocytes are always hypertrophic. They are bigger in size compared to the normal hepatocytes. So that, that really helped us to identify these small size, normal looking hepatocytes nicely coexisting together with the hypertrophic hepatocytes. So this is just a zoom in image just to show you that there are many normal looking hepatocytes living together with these enlarged and hypertrophic hepatocytes. So this is overlap image showing from region one to region 16 just to give you an overview about the extent of the presence of this new hepatocytes in a single sex cemetery. So after discovery of this like new hepatocytes, uh, we basically went on asking, what are these cells? So are these cells new hepatocytes? If they are new hepatocytes, are these cells autophagy competent or incompetent? So that was, that was really an uh, interesting question for us. And then that's why we, we went on to checking whether they are autophagy competent or not competent. And one of the way to check the autophagy competency is by examining the P62 expression level. I mentioned earlier that a P62 is autophagic substrate. So when autophagy is defective, then P62 is accumulated. Uh, so that's why we did a P62 immunofluorescence standing in this liver section. And to our surprising, what we found is that there were a lot of like areas in the liver section where P62 was negative. Ideally, we were expecting that being autophagy defective liver, the all liver should look great because of accumulation of P62, but we didn't see that case. We see many of the areas of the cells that are negative for P62. And we verify this result by P62 immunostaining as well, where we clearly see the presence of this brown stained P62 positive autophagy deficient hepatocytes nicely living together with this P62 negative normal looking hepatocytes. So we also verify this result in a ATG5 knockout model, which is another autophagy defective model. We clearly see many of the P62 negative areas uh, in this ATG5 liver section as well. This is another immunohistology standing for the P62, again, uh, showing from region one to the region two. There are many of the areas that are P62 negative in the section. So this is a zoom in image just taken from the 4X to 40X magnification. I'm sure you'll uh, pretty much appreciate about the presence of this new regenerating hepatocytes that are autophagy competent. I zoom in the image for this 40X and try to show you with the yellow arrow that there are many like uh, normal looking hepatocytes that are clearly uh, coexisting together with this brown stained P62 positive autophagy deficient hepatocytes. So, uh, so far, the conclusion of this study is that there is a new hepatocytes that are autophagy competent appearing in the injured autophagy deficient liver. So, so after this uh, finding, then we, wanna, we went on uh, taking a very conventional triple WH approach. So uh, basically we raised a four separate questions. Question A about when does the new cell appears and what are these cells and where are they coming from and how they are coming there. So these are very four important questions for us because it gives us a very important information about this new hepatocytes, about the timing of appearance of these cells, about the identity and function of these cells and about the location of the cells. Location means uh, where are they coming from? Are they coming from the liver itself or are they coming from uh, tissue other than the liver? And, we, uh, and also it gives information about the factors that are responsible for recruiting these cells into the liver. So we are actively pursuing this, uh, this
this new hypersense in these four different directions. So I'm not going to show all the data, but I'll try to show some of our unpublished data about this question A and question B. So I'll start with the question A about when does this new cell appears in this injured liver? So to answer this question, we basically, again, uh, took the in vivo approach. We basically crossed these 87 flocks mice, but this time with the indiscible pre-ERT2 mice. So this is an indiscible model of ATG7 knockout. So what happens is we generate an ATG7 uh, ERT2 mice. So these mice are pretty much normal because the induction has not been done. So what happens is basically when in a normal situation, these mice express the query recombinase, but actually it is trapped in the cytosol because the query recombinase is actually fused with the uh, estrogen receptor. So because of the trapping of this like query recombinase in the cytosol, the ATC7 is expressed in a very normal way. But however, when we inject the tamoxifen, what happens is the, this query recombinase is actually translocated from the cytosol into the nucleus. And it, once in the nucleus, then uh, it delete the ATG7. So until and unless we don't inject the tamoxifen, this mice is a pretty, a pretty wild type mice. So we have already established this model where we know that we need to inject twice the tamoxifen on day one and day two, and the ATG7 knockout happens on the day seven, and these mice develop the injury by day 15. So basically there is a time lag of one week uh, after the it is a seven knockout. So in this mice, we collected the liver tissue at a different time point and we looked for the P62 negative cells. And to our surprising, what we found is that we saw those new regenerative hepatocytes only after day 30. So we can see here the presence of a cluster of P62 negative cells on day 30 and the number of cells gradually increase as the mice gets older. And we didn't see the presence of these cells before the day 30. That's why that makes us to conclude that this new hepatocytes actually arise only on day 30. That means there is a time lag of two weeks after the onset of liver injuries. So the injury is necessary for the uh, appearance of this new hepatocytes. That's the information that we got it from this uh, study of this indiscible model. So we also took another approach about crossing this mice with the rosa mice. This rosa mice is actually a double fluorescence pre reporter mice. So we cross this ATG, we cross this uh, uh, albumin Cree and ATG5 mice with the rosa mice. So basic idea is that when the rosa mice is not crossed with the albumin Cree or ATG7, ATG5 mice, all the cell express the membrane bound tomato derate at the membrane. Like I saw here in the liver section and the kidney cells, all cell express the tomato derate in the membrane. However, when they are crossed with the albumin Cree and the ATG5, then they start to express the membrane-bound GFP protein. So the idea is any recombined cell will express the membrane-bound GFP, but any non-recombined cell will express the membrane-bound tomato derate protein in the membrane. So we generated this hepatocyte specific ATG5 knockout rosa knock-in mice. And to our surprising, what we found was that there are like membrane-bound GFP expressing hepatocytes, but not only that, there are a cluster of cells that do not express the GFP in the membrane. And actually, these are actually tomato derate positive, and these are the Morris images trying to show you that how nicely these new hepatocytes that are non recombined that are expressing the tomato derate nicely coexisting with the autophagy deficient GFP expressing uh, hepatocytes. So, this is another image just to show you the cluster of these autophagy competent new hepatocytes uh, coexisting together with these autophagy incompetent hepatocytes. So this suggests that new hepatocytes appear in a autophagy incompetent liver and this new hepatocytes paradoxically autophagy competent. So we already uh, characterized these cells by doing a different like cell specific markers. And so far all of the like hepatocyte specific markers are expressed by those new hepatocytes. That's why we know that these are indeed actually hepatocytes, not the other cells. So uh, overall summarizing my talk. So what we know so far is autophagy deficient liver is a perfect genetic model to study the mechanism of liver pathologies. And autophagy deficient liver develops uh, new regenerative hepatocytes that, that appears after the onset of liver injury. And we know that these new hepatocytes are autophagy competent 
And right now, we don't know what is the cellular origin or the factors responsible for the uh, recruitment or the development of these cells uh, in the injured limb. So that's it about my talk. Before I close up, I would like to uh, thank all of my current lab members and also my past trainees. Also special thanks to Tulane School of Medicine for giving a generous startup package. And also special thanks to ASIP and BHERD for giving some research support. So this is my lab team. And before I close up, uh, I'd like to make an announcement that there are some lab openings in my life. If anybody's interested, uh, please do not hesitate to uh, shoot me an email. And uh, finally, I would like to thank you all uh, for your attention. I'm ready to take your question, comments, or suggestions. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Bilon. Um, it was excellent uh, presentation of uh, autophagy, autophagy, role of autophagy in liver disease, and to a greater detail. More like what's like, someone, you is the simple presentation or Majanda Kiri. I mean, I mean, usually cup butter, pani, glass butter, panic, hira hek on so you is the scientific presentation, is the intense scientific presentation, Mrs. Karikana for those of us who are not directly involved in liver disease research, you say gagri vate pani khai jasto huncha, alikati body ekdamai overwhelming sense huncha, tara this is for good reason. Ekdamai impressive and excellent presentation and a lot of information. I learned myself a lot. Being a researcher who is working in the field of kidney, uh, it, it, it is really nice to see uh, there are some corollaries in between, some parallels in between uh, kidney and, and liver disease. And I will, I will, I'm very happy that I can come and talk with you about maybe uh, some cross uh, collaborations in between our labs. I have seen a lot of things that I have seen a lot uh, first of all, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Vikram Sarma uh, for his question. Vikram ji, please go ahead. Hello, Bilan ji. Excellent talk. Uh, remarkable work. I am mm excited -hmm. to talk about this. In the similar line, the compensatory cell concept, it's not only in liver. I, I, I saw this in, in, in the heart itself during the developmental stages there is like we have identified this new progenitor set of cells that would compensate to other like multiple population of cells involved in the development of heart so that is really exciting and i think it is a very common theme for organogenesis and, and maintenance of the tissue health um very interesting like what are like curious what questions i you new population of cells to coexist So you just looked at it in a snapshot in the adult stage, right? So right. has anybody looked at like developmental lineage, either they exist in the adult as like a heterogeneous populations because they were there to start with, or upon injury, there is some kind of uh, these uh, uh, extracellular factors that are secreted by the injured cells to go on to induce de differentiation of existing non hepatocyte cells, or possibly like a, there is like a, some kind of progenitor uh, population that exists within that tissue, and then these uh, these uh, factors kind of turn on those uh, developmental genes and they differentiate into hepatocytes. So, so so far as what I understood is you understand that they exist these compensatory or new set of population of cells. But where they arise from is is not known. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yes, Vikram. Actually, uh, those are the questions or concerns that uh, that's raised by the reviewers of the grant. Actually, <laughs> so can you do like a brain bow? You know, so the there's like a common hepatocyte progenitor, early progenitor, like a brain bow, your uh, single cell. Um, Clonal analysis, maybe you can parse it out. If you can see multiple clones of progenitor cells uh, giving rise to hepatocytes, and then maybe you can delineate these individual clones patches to see which ones of those are these new population of cells. I, uh, yeah, Bikram, actually, uh, 
you do have a size good case while my list. So we could have prison or the binder big room and a remarkable feature. I look at the jolly or the me. Let's say you project much. I drive with a good say. We see that these hepatocytes not only express the hepatocyte marker, actually they express uh, immune cell markers. Oh, wow. That, that's really surprising thing for us. And we are really curious why hepatocytes express the immune cell marker. It's, it's kind of like surprising thing for us. So maybe they're like a transient in between cells that can differentiate into immune, right. immune cells right. or also the hepatocytes. So that's why, uh, you know, what we are thinking right now is Actually, these cells are not coming from the liver. Actually, these cells are coming from outside the liver, and it's very likely they are coming from the bone marrow. And wow. has got a stem cells, so they likely migrate into the circulation and get into the liver, which is injured, which is actually looking for a new phase, new rounds of hepatocytes. We are thinking in that direction, and that's why one of the goal of this uh, study is to identify that hepatic factor which is responsible for recruiting those uh, bone marrow cells into the liver. But we, we don't have the evidence right now whether the bone marrow cells are coming into the liver or not. Uh, but, but we are working on that one, like kind of, you know, analyzing the bone marrow samples and tracking those like bone marrow cells by doing a, a X radiation experiment. So we are still in the early phase and we are heading in that direction. Maybe you can lineage stress some of those bone marrow cells and see in a, and then lineage stress in the injured mice and see if you can uh, trace those cells into right right I mean uh, we're hoping to do that experiment actually uh, that is a one excellent point and I, I as a as a kidney uh, person I would like to share something when we did single cell uh, RNA seq of kidney cells we found some cells which express immune cell markers, kidney cells expressing immune cell markers. And then I got, a, I got to talk with a, a person from Caltech uh, at a meeting and he said, you know what, we see the same thing. And I had my paper in bioarchive for 10 months because just reviewers would not accept that how could immune cell markers are expressed in kidney cells. So we are going in new domain and, and thank you so much, uh, Dr. Bikram. Uh, for your question and answer. Now, uh, I have been seeing multiple questions coming from Facebook Live as well as uh, in Zoom. And I also see a uh, raised hand uh, from Dr. Santos. Um, Dr. Santos, I will come to you uh, next, but let me take one question from Zoom uh, chat box. Um, Dr. Uh, Rupendra Shrestha uh, has asked a question and I'll read uh, that to you. I wonder if new hepatocytes are observed in human hepatic diseases, that is one question, or is it hepatic progenitor cells that are trying to regenerate in injured liver? That's a very common question in the field of liver biologists. Uh, yeah, there, there is a uh, appearance of new hepatocytes always in injured liver, even in case of human as well. So it's not only uh, there in the mouse models that are injured, but uh, that happens in a human liver as well. That's how actually, you know, the lost hepatocytes are replenished by new hepatocytes. And uh, you, you all know that liver has got a very good capacity of regeneration. So even if we cut like two thirds of the liver actually from the one, remaining one third, they can regenerate back to the normal shape and size. So that, that can happen. Uh, Back to the question about the progenitor cells. Uh, I cannot make a comment in terms of human diseases, but what I can tell in our model is that uh, I think it's not from the hepatic progenitor cells because well, we have some uh, preliminary evidence to show that actually they are coming outside from the hepatocytes. Hopefully I can present that data next time. Absolutely, and thank you. And I hope um, uh, Rupendra got his uh, question answered. And please always feel free to reach out to Dr. Bilon um, uh, with for, uh, follow up questions. <laughs> I think the time constraints we are going with um, uh, these question answers is a little bit uh, crispy way. Uh, Dr. Santos, you you had a question. Um, you know, question Mandani, <clears throat> you have a comment. Um, Ramro presentation. Um, Medical school, my father was not for a classroom, was just the other. I only elicit. Um, 
तर यदि डिटेलमा चाहिँ त गइन थिएन अब जाँचमा के सोच्छन् त्यसको आन्सर कहाँ कहाँ हुन्छ भन्ने तिर ध्यान जान्थ्यो यो चाहिँ अलिकति हायर लेभलमा पर्यो मेरो चाहिँ हजुरलाई क्वेशन चाहिँ अब हाम्रो फेसबुकमा अलिकति यही लेभलको अन्डरस्ट्यान्डिङ नभएको साथीहरूले पनि हेरिराख्नु भएको छ त्यही भएर म चाहिँ एउटा सबैले सोध्ने प्रश्न गर्छु यो लिभर डिजिजको बारेमा एउटा चाहिँ यो जुन टक्सिन्सहरूले जुन लिभर डिजिज गराउँछ त्यो इरिभर्सिबल हुन्छ एक स्टेजमा त तर त्यो टक्सिन्स चाहिँ कहिले छोड्न ठिक हुन्छ भनेर सोध्नुहुन्छ धेरै जसोले होइन त्यो अब त्यसको एन्सर चाहिँ त अभियसै छ तर पनि तपाईँलाई नै भन्न दिन्छु त्यो र अर्को चाहिँ भनौँ न मान्छेहरूमा एउटा यो लिभर ट्रान्सप्लान्टमा जाँदाखेरि चाहिँ एउटा लिभर अर्ग्यान ले कतिजनालाई डोनेट गर्न मिल्छ भन्ने पनि छ लिभर ट्रान्सप्लान्टको बारेमा मैले खास अब यो अलिकति टपिकसित सिमिलर नभए पनि यहाँ अलिकति हेरेको साथीहरूलाई चाहिँ कि टेक होम म्यासेज पनि हुन्छ भनेर सोधेको यो चाहिँ क्वेस्चन धन्यवाद सन्तोष सर यो टोक्सिनको विषयमा यस्तो होला सर अब लिभर आफैले पनि अब टोक्सिनले गर्दा हेपायरसाइसहरू त मरिहाल्छ तर बाँकीको हेपायरसाइसले टोक्सिनलाई पनि त डिटोक्सिफाई गर्छ त्यही नै एउटा हेपायरसाइजको वान अफ द मेजर फङ्सन पनि हो त्यही भएर आई थिङ्क टोक्सिनलाई कम्प्लिटली डिटोक्सिफाई नगरौँ जेल आई थिङ्क त्यो टोक्सिनको चाहिँ डेट्रिमेन्टल इफेक्ट त रहिरहन्छ नि होला आई गेस त्यही डिटोक्सिफाई भइसकेपछि अनि बल ब्याक टु नर्मल रिमेनिङ जुन हेपायरसाइजहरू चाहिँ ब्याक टु नर्मल फङ्सनिङ हुने होला आई गेस मैले तपाईँको क्वेसन बुझे अनुसार आई थिङ्क त्यही नै केस हुनुपर्छ सेकेन्ड क्वेसन सन्तोष सर के थियो यो लिभरको मैले पर्टिकुलरली मैले हजुरले भन्न खोजेको बुझिन एउटा लिभरले मल्टिपल मान्छेलाई कस्तो सुन्छ भने एउटालाई डोनेट गऱ्यो भने अब त्यो मान्छेले अब म डोनेट गर्न मिल्दैन भन्ने सोचाइ हुन्छ तर पनि एउटै लिभर चाहिँ मल्टिपल रिसिपियन्टहरूले लिएको एक्जाम्पलहरू छ तर धेरै मान्छेहरूलाई चाहिँ अब जस्तो भनौँ न मैले यो लिभर ट्रान्सप्लान्टको केस टिचिङमा चाहिँ लिभर ट्रान्सप्लान्ट सुरु हुन लाग्छ अनि त्यहाँ चाहिँ मैले अलिअलि फाइनेन्सियली सपोर्ट गर्ने उस गरिरहेको छु अनि त्यसमा चाहिँ अलिअलि क्वेसनहरू सोधिन्छ एकजना मान्छेले कतिजनालाई सम्म डोनेट गर्न मिल्छ भन्ने छ अरू अर्ग्यान जस्तो एउटाले एउटा होइन लिभरमा चाहिँ एउटा लिभरको यो बडप्पन छ भनौँ न अब हाम्रो हिन्दू शास्त्रमा पनि यो मेरो कलेजो हो भन्छन् नि त कलेजोलाई मोटु भन्दा पनि माथि राखेर एउटा उस राखेको छ किनभने लिभर चाहिँ त्यति राम्रो अर्ग्यान चाहिँ एउटैले चाहिँ मल्टिपल मान्छेलाई पनि डोनेट गर्न मिल्छ भनेर मैले त्यही भएर चाहिँ हाम्रो बुढापाकाहरूले चाहिँ कलेजो भन्नुभएको होला भन्ने सोच्छु क्या मैले चाहिँ आफूले क्लिनिकल एन्सर त अझ मलाई भन्दा सन्तोष एक्चुअली थाहा हुनुपर्ने हो मेरो हिसाब तपाईँले तपाईँले भनिदिनु भने मैले भोलिन्टियर गरेँ यो लिभर बिइङ हाइली डिजेनरेटिभ अनलाइक किडनी अर हार्ट अर लङ वेर वन अर्गन गोज टु वन रिसिपियन्ट वन लिभर डोनेटेड लिभर क्यान बी ट्रान्सप्लान्टेड इन टु मल्टिपल रिसिपियन्ट्स because it grows very well and it is considered highly regenerative uh, i hope i answered that question santosh i think that was the thing so thank you uh, i aba hami alikati ek ghanta ko mark hit kari sakeko chhau uh, question haru cha i will try to get as many questions as possible thank you so much uh, for your understanding ma chai aba facebook bata aayeko question ma jana chahanchu saligram paudel ji le euta dui ta question sodhnu bhayeko cha ma quickly read garchu why the new cells are always surrounded by p62 positive cells now that is one question and the second question is what is the origin of the cells um th- dr bilon uh <laughs> that's a very good 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 and interesting question uh, i can say that we basically don't know why uh the p62 new cell p62 negative new cells are always together with the p62 positive cells we we don't know basically that's one of the reason we think that maybe they are originating from the non hepatocytes like the immune cells because immune cells can they can kind of infiltrate and they they move around the uh, tissue by through the circulation so probably somehow the immune cells they got there and they probably differentiate to the hepatocytes but that's all just a hypothetical model uh 
so that's what I can come in right now. What, what was the second question, Tara, sir? The second question was, what is the origin of the cells? <laughs> I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> I, said, no I don't know. We, th we think it's actually they are originating from uh, bone marrow cells. Uh, that's just, again, hypothesis only, but uh, there is some indication they come from bone marrow. But again, bone marrow has a lot of cells, different type of cells, but we think it's a bone marrow stem cell, hematopoietic stem cells. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the question and thank you for the answer. Now, uh, we, I, I will take two questions that have uh, come on uh, Zoom chat box. Uh, one question uh, comes from Ashwini Nepalji. Thank you for excellent presentation. Please answer only if the time allows. Uh, one question, sir. What would be the reason the, for normal ALT after liver, liver injury besides the new hepatocytes? Why would your ALT be normal injury? Uh, my uh, ALT label uh, normal say we need your moral but say as a high name basically it's a normal say we it's high name by that's a surprising cura the cube like no you have better size out of here when still say ALT label say back to normal then still it's high new to one of the model of injury process say ongoing needs her sale or it's a money that's what they were ALT label say high new was it as Injury work, currently say, no, I have parasites. I would say, I don't know who functions say, take on Gorego, okay, but it's a hamro hypothesis or castle. Yes, thank you. Our, um, I mean, pass me at Limo extra time or my question a rule to this Aksuma part two. JP Mandalzile Sodno Bakosa, the presence of stem cells in liver is still debated. What is your take on this, Dr. Bilan? Absolutely, that, that's true. Modern uh, <laughs> liver film, uh, uh, debatable uh, topic or uh, existence of uh, stem cell in the liver. Uh, angle study indicates liver stem cell, liver bahek, liver bahirago stem cell, let's say, contribute uh, thank you. Dr. Bikas Sakya, North Carolina, but also the matter. Do all hepatic diseases involve defect in autophagy? Uh, how can your model be useful in studying hepatic diseases not, in, not involving autophagy defect? <laughs> thank you, Bikas, for the question. Like, this is the question we, we every time get when we submit a paper or we submit a grant. So basically they ask for what is the physiological or pathophysiological relevance of your model. So, <laughs> so that's really true. But, uh, uh, but what I can come in right now is there is indeed uh, uh, many liver diseases where it's already known that autophagy process is defective. I won't say it's a deficient, so there's a difference between deficient and defective. So one of the very like uh, uh, liver disease that that's interest to us where autophagy is defective is a, a nafoli, it's a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease where it's already established that autophagy process is blocked at the flock state. So basically autophagogen can be formed but they cannot fuse with the lysosome. So basically there is no degradation is happening. So basic idea is the autophagy function is compromised. So uh, I can definitely say that the extent of like autophagy defect in NAFOLD is not same as the autophagy deficient model, the genetic model that we have it, but most of the finding that we have in our mice can be reproduced in that model as well. So we have that evidence. So that, that's the reason actually we think that studying our model is pathophysiologically relevant uh, to common liver disease. That, that's what we love to say that. Great. Of course, the, uh, the extent of like finding may not be same as mm -hmm. pinpoint on that. The degree of the differences might be, uh, it, it may vary. Thank you so much. Uh
Dr. Bikas and uh, for the answer, Dr. Bilon. Uh, Sanjeevan Gautam Lesodnavata uh, from Maryland, uh, Bethesda. Uh, great work, Dr. Khambu. Thanks for sharing your research. A quick question Do autophagy genes overexpressing mice? In, uh, which are liver specific, let's say, exist? And if so, what is the liver phenotype? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question, Sanjeevan. So I'm looking for a mice model that overexpressed the autophagy, okay? So, but the mice has been created by a Korean group. So they basically overexpressed the ATG5. And uh, actually it, it just recently reported so uh, they haven't reported any uh, specific like phenotype in the liver, but what, what they have reported is that those autophagy expressing, uh, autophagy overexpressing like mice, they do have like a kind of, uh, I think that increases a little bit longevity. And I think uh, they have kind of good cognitive functions. They basically study in terms of like neurobiology. So it's, it's not, uh, actually I requested that mice uh, uh, to that Korean group so that we can study uh, the role of uh, activation of autophagy in the context of liver, but so far, no luck. <laughs> I, I hope I can get that mice. <laughs> Let's, we, we wish you all the best also. Abama, you have a question, I guess, Ram Bino, the Mahato Jile, while a Ravindra Mandal Jile, you have a question. So, no, I guess, there's no mirror question, but I'm a translational scientist, I work on human uh, samples. Uh, as a Bilon Bata, I'm like, yes, you Dr. Bilon Bata Bane, um, how he has been testing his hypothesis and different um, models and mechanisms using mice model. Mirror your questions, uh, have you started or are you thinking of, because you are a pathologist, uh, are you trying to see what is happening in, in human liver? Like what you, you showed to us was uh, what was happening in, in mouse liver. A myriad question that take question at George Sura in the Mandalilla Sodnovaco, sir. Is there a link between autophagy and gut microbiome? Maybe it's a little bit <laughs> too much, but I will ask. Yeah, uh, what your second question, but answer Sura Gorsu. Uh, actually, uh, we already reported one paper about connecting the autophagy defect in the liver and the changes in the gut microbiome. So that's already published, and we know that. When there is a problem in autophagy, sorry, autophagy in the liver, that changes the uh, composition of the gut microbiome. So, uh, which is actually not good. So, so obviously uh, we have reported just it just published in uh, 2020, just at the end of 2020. So we know that. So, change in autophagy in liver that impacts the gut microbiome. So that's a, uh, uh, I think the straightforward answer for that one. So about the translational aspect of our finding, what, I mean, I wish I can like uh, do something translational that uh, we're doing in a preclinical model, but at a present context, what we are trying to do is actually after coming to Tulane. So Tulane has got a, a good source of biorepository. So basically uh, they have a collection of different uh, human clinical sample, including the liver tissues. Mm -hmm. So uh, slowly, like, I mean, it's just a one year. So, but still uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm collaborate, collaborate with the pathologists who have established that biorepository and try to test some of our finding in a preclinical model in those uh, human clinical samples. And particularly we are interested in the NAFLI. I mentioned that earlier. So there are cases of like, I mean, they have a tissue samples uh, collected from the uh, NAF, especially the NAS. So we, we hope to test our idea in that sample as well. Great, thank you. And since this is NIRI webinar, I should um, state this. Uh, one of the objectives of NIRI is to collaborate with uh, hospitals and, and physicians, scientists in Nepal and, and work in the field of like human diseases. So hopefully one day there will be opportunity for us to collaborate um, on liver disease. So thank you again. Uh, this is the last question um, I will take and I, I apologize if there are any other more questions. I, I request you to uh, reach out to Dr. Bilon um, directly. Uh, Rajesh uh, G is asking, uh, serum SLT increases in liver injury but when uh, we compare with wild type and knockout mice, 
there is no change in the albumin. Are there are they produced from different cells? Yeah, I think uh, probably I could not clarify uh, in more detail in that particular slide. Uh, that's the reason actually we wonder, like, despite of severe ongoing liver injury, why the serum albumin level is normal in those mice? So uh, that's a perplexing question for us because we thought that a lot of hepatocytes are dying. That's why the serum enzymes are elevated. I mean, hepatic enzymes are elevated in the serum. If hepatocytes are dying, then why the albumin? That's still normal because albumin is synthesized and secreted by the hepatocytes. That's the reason we started looking for the uh, presence of the new hepatocytes. Uh, thank you, Bob Moile. I have a time like when respect Gone Vanego, so I am almost 15 minutes over that. Uh, uh, all of the time, I mean, I, I respect all your time, your presence, um, coming and, and um, participating, asking questions, and, and your active engagement both on Zoom and Facebook Live. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. Sapkota for 20 seconds to announce that uh, he is bringing Dr. Anut Subedi, you are COVID ko time at home. Uh, they, they are going to talk to Dr. Anut Subedi from Nepal. Uh, would you like to describe what is it and um, when we can hear that conversation, Santos? Uh, thank you, Parasar. I'm um, late, he's already getting to his rati, Dr. Anup Subedi Sangako, I'm like Kobe vaccines, Kobarema, detail, my Kuragaregasum, Costa de Launi, Costa, Costa Condition Manolani, Athava vaccine could safety cost us up, Escobarema, and them detail my Kuragaregasum, two Amro Sapati talk show, Oma, Azami, two YouTube channels or Sapati talk show, this month, I mean, broadcast of this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and we will, we will definitely. Uh, uh, go and and watch that that interview. Thank you again. Abba, before we end, I would like to uh, let Dr. Bilon speak a few words about how how it felt and 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 anything he, you would like to say other than the presentation. Basically, uh, uh, I'd like to thank Neri for first of all to giving me this opportunity actually to showcase our work. Uh, uh, other than that, uh, what I feel is that, I mean, it's a really good initiative that what uh, Neri is trying to do, uh, trying to achieve in terms of uh, initiating the research and collaboration in Nepal. Uh, if there is anything that uh, I, can, I can contribute uh, to achieve that goal, I'll, I'll be really happy to be part of that journey. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, and, and we always look for that opportunity. And thank you for your time, your presentation, excellent presentation. We will always remain grateful and, and thank you. And with this, we end today's webinar. We are planning to do it on a monthly basis. We will announce when our next uh, webinar will be and who is going to be our next speaker. But I uh, would like to thank you again for your time and you being here. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks.